It's crazy those jokes that you, I always call those like the open mic jokes or like just like the in limbo ones that wait for like five years and then come back and you're mm-hmm. like, it's when the time is right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so, so bad about uh, like saving old notes. Mm-hmm. And then when I do, but when I do see stuff, I'm like, why the fuck did I stop saying that? I was like getting somewhere and then I like, you know, whatever. I know you just, they just drop off for some reason. I have so many of those and you'll scan your stuff like, all right, well, I guess it wasn't the right time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I guess it wasn't the right time. Great to be here. No. (laughs) Simon Gibson, everybody. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, so we are, did we just start now? We, you know, it doesn't matter. We've been started. It doesn't. We'll, we'll just. Yeah. We'll just go. Cut it in. Oh, cut it out. This is LA. Everything's real here. Yeah. It's the realest place ever. I think so. Try the beer. What do you think? Cheers. Oh, let's see. Hey, Thank cheers. Thank you so much for coming over. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Spits it out. <laughs> I mean. This has alcohol? Yeah. It's nothing I haven't drank special. for nine years. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's just a light, nothing crazy. It's really good. Yeah. Trader Joe's, you've done it again. I mean, those hoes. I asked a guy at Trader Joe's the other day for a wine suggestion. Uh-huh. You always have to buckle up when you do that. You, yeah. You either get like this one or he takes you through, he took me through the store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even work there. <laughs> <laughs> that, I actually, I write at the Starbucks next to a Trader Joe's, but this Starbucks doesn't have a restroom, which that's a ween. Um, Bastards. I know. That's half the reason you go to Starbucks. <laughs> I know, which is, I think, why they don't have a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Starbucks <laughs> to have a $6 mediocre cup of coffee mm-hmm. and blow up your bathroom. <laughs> I actually started doing this thing where I have my reusable Starbucks cup. I fill it up at home and I go right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they don't. They truly don't care. I don't. Yeah, I don't care yeah. if, if they care. So, <laughs> hey, I've, fuck you, yeah, Starbucks! You took in so much of my money for that <laughs> shit. That's the opening of the pot. That's the oh, actual okay. opening where I'm just like, "Fuck you, Starbucks! <laughs> you piece of shit!" <laughs> and roll the intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. So, oh yeah. So there was this guy in Trader Joe's the last two days. So I go there to pee mm-hmm. um, since disturbs. And two days in a row, this guy is in the, there's two stalls on the phone slash singing slash very loud for a long time. Yeah. Today, same thing. I pee a lot. So then I go again Yeah. and he's gone. The other stall was used obviously i wouldn't have chosen the one the crazy person was in but i had no choice yeah i go in there's a, a trader joe's basket and then a f- full empty bottle of wine in the trash can wow. so this dude is just him going in there two days in a row chugging a wine singing having an old time yeah and dipping wow that guy <laughs> also <laughs> Why didn't you say hi? You know, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I got to see him. That, I was, party. that was me the whole time. It was me the whole time. <laughs> I was there. I would have said hello. You have wine all over your yeah, mouth. That's my, <laughs> you didn't see me today because it was right before I came over here. That's a pretty good. I feel like that's a, a pretty easy thing if you're, you know, if you're like you need the sauce, mm-hmm. you know, a pretty good scam to just do. Just take a. You know, nothing too fancy. You don't mm-hmm. want to go over like 10 bucks. It didn't look expensive they, the one yeah, you chose. They start to notice. But yeah, I t- you take a nice five, six dollar <laughs> bottle in there, chug it. No one's ever going to, none of those people are going to stop you either. I don't think so. No, they're too t- cheerful. So I tried looking for him after and I think I found him. You did? And like Just like around the area. Yeah. There's this older guy with glasses, dressed very proper. He looked very French. Like Whoa. Say like a... 
a guy pretending to be French that's homeless. Yeah. A and guy I think it pretending was... to be French that's homeless. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now scene. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just uh, the French. Okay. And canceled. No. Yeah. Now roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just giving you so many openings of me just literally canceling myself <laughs> through corporations. Uh, yeah, it's, it's happening others. lately. <laughs> yeah, a lot, it's happening a lot yeah. lately to me <laughs> specifically. <laughs> well, I've canceled myself from my Zara jeans. I keep, t- I like I say, I pee a lot. Sometimes I, I panic pee, I get, like I get in the stall. Yeah. And I keep ripping the zipper off. Oh. And in two shows, I've had <laughs> fully open fly. Fully exposed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fully exposed. <laughs> fully exposed. Well, as I was just mentioning before, I... <laughs> so I'm wearing uh, uh, corduroy. <laughs> Love them. Had them for a couple of years. They are starting to fray. And like now that I notice this one, there are like little spots. It looks... <laughs> it looks like... <laughs> toothpaste and that's all it looks like just it, toothpaste it doesn't look like anything else <laughs> it just looks like various spots of toothpaste <laughs> but it's weird i mean it's literally like the color of the material is right ru- because they're <laughs> i don't know if you can tell but they they started out like kind of a maroon yeah it's like a, nice a purple color. it's a good color yeah uh, I love these pants. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, shit. Where uh, are they from? We can cancel them. They're they're Levi's. These weren't like cheap. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. I don't buy cheap shit. <laughs> oh, Levi's. I've heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> I covered this in toothpaste. Nothing's wrong with the pants. <laughs> I just covered them in toothpaste. Well, it's, like, it's a new trend. You know a joke I had on the back burner? Hmm. About Levi's. It's not funny, but it's just an observation I've had, which probably is why it stayed in the observation deck. Get it out there. It's, uh, you know, it's crazy. I mean, Get it uh, out for the world. Levi's on the back of guys' jeans show the width and the height. Girls' jeans, yeah, they, they do. don't. Yeah. Oh, they don't? They don't. What do they show? Just oh, Levi's. Just this, oh, not even the size at no. all. Because girls don't want their size showing, but guys on the outside. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it is. It's like right there on the. I think that's interesting. That is interesting. I mean, it's just because they Levi's has decided that women don't <laughs> want to show their size. I'm assuming. Or have we, did women decide that for Levi's? I don't know. I need to look. I need to do some more research. I mean, sometimes I feel like I want to hide my uh, <laughs> the the leg <laughs> length on my. <laughs> Because I like, you know, I I can't get my, they basically stop at 30 inseam okay. or whatever, which the the leg. Yeah, girls know nothing about that. They don't know anything. Okay. So, I mean, really like if a guy's like a, uh, like a 32, 36. So that means he'd be like, you know, pretty, pretty thin waist and then uh, like six, five. Okay. Yeah, thirty six. Yeah, uh, I only know this because I <laughs> was looking for so me and uh, you know M K mm-hmm. Paulson. <laughs> great I'll guy. You, I'll see you in hell. Oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> great guy. R- roll intro. <laughs> yeah, M K Paulson. I'll see you in freaking hell. <laughs> right next to Mr. Levi. Uh, right next to Levi's. Right next to Starbucks. Not having a bathroom. <laughs> um. So anyway, we were. Uh, you know, we um. We're doing a, a joint Halloween costume this year, you know. Oh, a, that's so cute. As a couple, you got to spice it yeah. up. Yeah. You know? As a platonic couple that will never, <laughs> no matter how many times he tries, now, never. Uh, what is it? Uh, so, so we are, uh, we, uh, you know, the sketch, the SNL sketch with Farley and Swayze, oh, the Chippendale dancer. Of course. So we're that. That um, is going to be amazing. Yeah, we already wore it actually um, at at a, our show. Uh, but so, but we also spent way more money on it than I had hoped. <laughs> With like no clothes, but did you do all of it? Well, so it's like yeah, the the pants, the the tuxedo shirt, the mm-hmm. bow tie, and then what really cost the most? The wig. Oh, you, you had know? a good one. Uh, yeah, from like Party City, but it was still like twenty <laughs> bucks. So we're in. I'm in the whole like fifty dollars with this costume. So I'm wearing it at least three more times this weekend because it is. You know, because podcasts are released live, so it is Halloween weekend. Uh, 
as everyone who's listening and watching knows. <laughs> It'll be posted two days after Halloween. Well. We hope you had a wonderful Halloween. Yeah. I hope you didn't. Yeah. Because mine sucked, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going in this weekend with a lot of hope. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, the, yeah, so I'm like, we're we're going to parties this weekend, you know. Um, but when I was looking for like pants, because they kind of wear like, I was like, oh, I don't really have like a black pair of dress pants, you know. Yeah. And uh, me neither. And, and neither did he. And so we're like going to Goodwill, and I'm like, there's no freaking way they're gonna have my size and then leg. So I was I was already content with like rolling up my mm-hmm. pant leg, you know. Uh, but I found these pants that were like perfect or what I thought for me. And then I like <laughs> hold them up. I'm like, oh, my God, these are so long. It's <laughs> insane. And then I was like, MK. And he uh, he got them and he tried them on. They're the best pair of pants that he's ever. He's like, these are going to make the rotation. Wow. Goodwill. And they were a, a 36 leg. So now, you know. So that's when I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, He's very tall. You bastard <laughs> well at least one of you found them there and I, I did find a pair of pants but i did roll them up and it looked hilarious because everything i do is <laughs> pretty good uh, <laughs> it's funny but, no it's good it's good it's, it's, good. A, it's a good thing uh, but yeah so we're definitely keep an eye out for us uh well you already missed it but oh shit um, show after yeah <laughs> uh, show next time yeah I'll plug his stuff. You follow him. Follow. You better fucking follow him. Yeah, I need the help. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't tour until I get to 100K. That's what Hollywood told me. It hurts. I'm trying to stay. I always trying to stay optimistic. Yeah. Um, two weeks ago, I lost a chunk of my eyebrow. I think it's getting to me. I colored it in. I don't know what happened. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I didn't notice. What happened? This, uh, just this whole part fell out. I woke up. It's gone. I think I'm stressed. <laughs> might be the stress. It might be all those jobs. Ah! <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish they could come see your show. That's fine. No, I don't care. Uh, well, it is every Tuesday, so if you want to. There you go. Look it, at but, that. Not No outfit. But, but we, we just wear those costumes every <laughs> single show now. You like, should. Yeah. <laughs> not Halloween. Like, <laughs> a special Christmas edition. <laughs> Everyone's watching. Just wear, like, a Santa hat. Santa hat, yeah. Have you ever listened to Chris Farley's audiobook? Or he has a book, but as an audiobook? No. Oh, so good. I'll give you my Audible login if you want to listen you. to it. Thank you. Audible doesn't stop those um those <laughs> things. I just you know. I mean, I should I should probably have a, another book on my Kindle. You know. Oh, the old Kindle. Yeah, it's been sitting next. To, it was a <laughs> Christmas present, and I, uh, I had a I had an ex. <laughs> I had an ex Ooh. who uh, who was super into Harry Potter, and I never read him. And it was like the Kindle came with all of the books downloaded. Oh wow, that's a lot of books. Yeah, and I was like, what a what a sweet gesture. <laughs> and then I'm just like, can't wait for the periodical follow up questions mm-hmm. about any of the things that I haven't read. You're just at watching all. the book, the movies really quick. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is, I was like, I, I had already seen the movies. It's no fun to do the reverse before order. I met her. I've seen all the movies. Yeah, you're not a loser. Yeah, and then I was just like, let's watch all the movies. And it was just like, I'm not going to watch the movies with you until you read all the books. I'm like, that would be years after I'm dead. (laughs) Then we're not watching the movies. (laughs) Yeah. Hate to break it to you. I was only being, you know, I was not being sincere about even watching the movies. I was just bringing it up to... Be nice. I I would have said the same thing and felt the same way. Yeah. I got a Kindle when they came out for Christmas or something. Hated it because I liked the gratification of looking at the top after you finish and seeing how far you haven't gotten. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, how? Okay. And then. You know what I, I found easier about the Kindle? <laughs> this is interesting stuff, folks. Kindle what plug. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting paid off by big Kindle. <laughs> What I found about it is like I always got discouraged about the amount of pages I had left. But with oh. Kindle, it does a thing where I mean, I'm sure you can change it to pages, but it shows you like the percentage that you're done with the book. And for some reason, that was more encouraging me. OK. Encouraging to me 
to finish. I didn't know that it did that. I read Jurassic Park on my Kindle. You ever read Jurassic no, Park? No, is it good? Let me tell you something. Oh, wait, like the movie? So it, it was originally a book. No way. Written, I did not know that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, written by uh, Michael Crichton, who wrote like um, like the Andromeda Strain. And um, he wrote a, I mean, pretty much all of his books got turned into, he wrote Congo. Okay. Remember Congo? I feel like I do. It's, a, it's bad, but. I feel uh, like that would be, um, I feel like my friend Mace, Mace, do you know Macy Isaacs? D- yes. They do yes, a really do. funny podcast with old like sci-fi or like movies like that. Yeah. I feel like that was on that. Probably. <laughs> I mean, let me. So, yeah, it, the book came out in like 1989. And as, as soon as it got released, Steven Spielberg was like, I'm making this into a movie. Um, So it was like a, you know, worldwide hit. Uh, But the thing about that book is it is freaking brutal like it's graphic like the dinosaurs just destroy people in this book i mean like so i've always been uh since i read that book i've been a big champion for (laughs) them re-releasing or not re but remaking jurassic park Mm -hmm. is like a hard r rated just like (laughs) gore fest because that was the book uh, as fast as I've ever read a book, took me the whole pandemic. Uh, <laughs> Two hundred and fourteen pages. Wow, no. good job! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, actually, no, it was like four hundred pages, but still, yeah, I felt good about it. Full book. Yeah, and that was only because of the Kindle and the percentage. And I was like, look at that! I'm already like fourteen percent. I enjoyed reading over the pandemic because I didn't have the anxiety of I should be doing comedy right now. Yeah, I. Yeah. In a lot of ways, <laughs> the pandemic was like the for my health, the best like thing that ever happened to me. Same. Yeah. I got the the pandemic went on so long that I got really <laughs> fat, got really into shape. I probably lost like somewhere between like I don't I didn't weigh myself, but for sure somewhere between 30 and 50 pounds. It's a lot of weight. I don't even know. Uh got real fat. Got real, got thinner, <laughs> and then gained it all back in the same like year and a half. <laughs> Woo! Like it was, it was like a Mac from Always Sunny level yeah. of like weight gain, <laughs> like up and down. <laughs> Except I wasn't doing it for a show. Yeah, <laughs> so that's crazy. so funny. Today when I I was writing this morning, at, you know, at the Starbucks with no bathroom, and I wrote, "This is really bad." I just wrote it today. I'm a yo-yo dieter. Um, Actors diet for roles. I diet because roles. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Whoa. We'd never make it to the stage again. You just type bullshit and think, <laughs> this is not a waste of my time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a thing where I was like, yeah, a lot of people made sourdough bread during the pandemic and I ate it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh. Got a sourdough starter right here. <laughs> uh, I like sourdough. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good bread. But I did eat, I feel like a lot of us uh, ate a lot of mediocre bread made by friends over the pandemic. If you're like, if you're that lucky. If you're that lucky <laughs> to have friends that are alive yep. through the, yeah. R.I.P. R- <laughs> Just R- in R- general. R.I.P. Everyone <laughs> ever. Sarunara. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do our wieners? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Are you guys ready for the weekly wiener? Mm-hmm. Woo woo. Um, okay. <laughs> I love that. The, is that the theme song for it? The should be weekly wi- <laughs> wee. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> we can we can add that in every add time. In. Yeah, <laughs> just my just the sound effect of me going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be good. That's my impression of Tim Allen. <laughs> oh, and it's not good. We're gonna it's cut not. that for the real. <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. Wee. Okay, I'm pretty upset about my wiener. All so right. my wiener is <laughs> same <a> here. <laughs> <laughs> Sourdough bread. Yeah. Um, my wiener is how expensive Blink One Eighty Two tickets are. Oh shit! Did you hear they're coming back out? I heard that. I haven't heard anything about how much tickets are because <laughs> I haven't looked. <laughs> no. So I wouldn't have. But my best friend, she from Florida, she lives in San Diego now. She's got. She's pregnant. She has a kid and. We were going to have like a girl's day. I was going to go there. We we're going to get babysitters. Our mm-hmm. first time, Dilly, you know, like 
pretend like we were young. Yeah. I mean, I do that every day, but with <laughs> with her. Um, so she was like up in the morning, ready to get the tickets right when they were out. She texted me the tickets were two hundred and eighty dollars. Woo! And I was like, Well, we're not going to see Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> two and that for like base level tickets, regular tickets. Is it because that guy is all crazy now and is like trying to fight alien? What's his deal? Is that Mark? Which one? No, Tom DeLonge. Tom is? I don't know. Yeah, he's like. I didn't hear about this. Yeah, he's he's wild. He's like a he's a cure, right? I mean, really? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Ooh. I just heard some crazy shit about that guy. Uh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. There's you just hear about Travis all the time because of yeah. Accidents and Kardashians. Yeah. So accidents and accidents. I mean, I think they all really need the money. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> they're really struggling. But if you really need the... Well, I, I don't know. No. Maybe they're sold out. But like, if you really need the money, where are you? Why don't you make them a little cheaper? I think that's just messed up. First of all, everyone who I feel... Not everyone, but most of us who listen to that music what, was listening to it while not doing good in school and probably not making too much money right now. I was about to say, have you... <laughs> Millennials can't even buy a house. Okay, yeah. you think we're gonna spend two hundred? And the answer is yes, uh, <laughs> because we want to go back in time uh, to the nineties when things were <laughs> nice. All, all the small things. Should have said that. Should have uh, said that's that. good Should've though. No, that was good. That was good. My mom was like, "Well, they're gonna have to lower them when they've only sold out the front row." And I said, <laughs> "Mom, they're gonna sell out." That's what's really frustrating. People love it. it, it now it's nostalgia. Mm -hmm. You know, Blink One Eighty Two. Where are they playing? We were gonna. I guess they're gonna be in L.A. and San Diego. But I was gonna go to San Diego since she lives there. Which Got it. San Diego should have been even cheaper. Yeah, I wonder how much they are in L.A. I don't know. Probably three something at least. This freaking town. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't. Take it. <sighs> so that's my wiener. Yeah, that sucks. Blink-182, do mm -mm. better. Get better wieners. Yep. You can't All do three that of you. to us. Because the one guy's like, uh, and she doesn't seem to matter <laughs> that I'm lacking in the bulge. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Uh, okay, so, now after that, I'm really in the mood to go to Blink-182, so yeah. I'm going to go buy my ticket. I'm, pay I'm paying. I'm paying. <laughs> Honestly, raise the price. Yeah. <laughs> Front row. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my wiener. Let's see here. Just like a small thing that bugged you that shouldn't have. Just something that got those, you know, you know anger. Yeah. For no reason. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, I think. Uh, <laughs> so number one, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Uh, yeah, I ain't the tallest in the world. 30. Uh, Levi. Yeah. And that's I'm rolling them up. <laughs> so, you know, one of the best thing that's things that's happened to me is, uh, you know, I was at a Target not too long ago. And uh, this uh, old, little old lady asked me to reach something for her. Oh, oh man. I asked her to marry me. <laughs> um, that's as good as it's going to get. So not the tallest guy. And, you know, I'm here in like, you know, I watch I like basketball. I'm from Portland. So I root for the Blazers, <laughs> even though they Break my heart. I'm a Dolphins fan. I get oh, it. You get it. I get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Not alive for that uh, undefeated season. Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. I uh, wish I was. <laughs> 72. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, I was already 10 years old. No. Uh, <laughs> but so, okay. So I'm. it's basketball in general. Okay. These guys are so tall. They mm -hmm. got it all. Mm -hmm. They're so fucking entitled and privileged. And I'm just... Talking about the height factor, okay? <laughs> Not the the wealth. Any no, <laughs> here's the, if you're over six three, you are rich. No matter <laughs> if you have no money or not, if you're a six foot three man, you're doing okay. All right, and here's and I'm watching it last night, and the announcers keep talking about the same player who's like guarding a bigger player or something, and they're like, "Yeah, he's so tough down there. He doesn't get bullied down there." Even though, you know, even though he's not the biggest or the strongest down there, uh, you know, he plays a lot bigger than his size. I mean, he is six foot five, but he plays <laughs> a lot bigger than his size. And I was like, oh, he's what? a giant. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, that's not a tall player in the NBA. I don't even think that's the average height of an NBA player. I think it's below the average height, but I'm just like, 
it's a whole world like basketball while it's my favorite sport to watch it's the sport that i have the least <laughs> relation <laughs> or like understanding of how that world works at all uh and it just made me really mad because i was like how dare you say that he's still a be like, yeah, he plays a lot bigger in size. I mean, in real life, he's a huge giant. Yeah, don't <laughs> you know? pretend like he's short. Just say, yeah. Hey, give it up for this short king. You know, he's <laughs> you know, he's a measly six foot four, and I don't know how he makes it work. Uh. You know, just a real little <laughs> troll climbing out from his hole, his little tiny <laughs> six foot eight <laughs> troll hole. That's so that would be frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a little bit undersized at center at six foot ten, but you know he makes it work for him. That's the perfect kind of wiener, though. It's the person that says something like it, it when it's not what it is. Yeah, like it's that's not you know he's tall. Yeah, he's he's if you see someone who's like six foot six, most of the time you're like, wow, this is like one of the tallest people I've ever seen. You know, and it's like, yeah, I mean that would be you know kind of a run of the mill professional basketball player but you almost never see people who are like seven feet tall in real life no and when you do you stare at them <laughs> and for me and for me someone who's six foot six and mm. someone who's seven feet tall they are the same to me to me they look exactly i'm just like uh-huh okay yeah, they're buildings yeah I'm literally looking up <laughs> at their cock. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm shaking. Woo. And they're uh, like, is that toothpaste on your pants? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is now. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, how dare you show a little class. Mm -hmm. Give these short kings, you know, these short six foot five kings <laughs> their proper respect. Yeah, I feel bad for that guy. Yeah, I feel <laughs> what a fucking loser. At least he made it into the NBA. Yeah, probably a virgin. <laughs> oh, so that's yeah. That's a good wiener. And I've let it go. Yeah. Salute. Salute. <laughs> to the short kings. To the short kings. Oh, I get oh the Gelsons too. I it got found in that Trader Joe's business. Gelsons is not uh that expensive. I don't know some of the I mean, things. I mean, oh, for beer. <laughs> yeah, for alcohol. Everything it's else fine. is is insanely expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that I stopped talking. I was like, um, before. <laughs> I went to get an apple there and it was like five dollars. No, no. It's truly what's weird is that like you could get like they have like single can sodas, you know, that are like a LaCroix is sometimes like 35 cents. Mm -hmm. Or like a can of Coke is like 50 cents. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is cheaper than it actually is to buy a <laughs> six, a twelve pack of it here. I don't know like, who does their prices. Yeah, and then and then I'll get a coffee from the bakery. It's like two thirty. I'm like, yeah. wow, what an affordable cup of coffee. And then I'll buy a croissant that's twelve dollars. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you guys are fucking with me right now. It's a weird store. I usually <laughs> that's only my other wiener. <laughs> by yeah. the way. Gelson's is a wiener. <laughs> it, it, it wants to be Whole Foods, but Whole Foods has like, it's, Whole Foods is Disneyland to me. Yeah. Like everything about it. No, Whole Foods is like, <laughs> here's how we're keep up with, whole, uh, or Gelson's is like, here's how we'll keep up with Whole Foods. We'll make everything as expensive, <laughs> but we're selling Kraft mac and cheese yes. for the same price. Like <laughs> out of their minds, out of their minds. Yeah. So if you're on the East Coast, you're not missing much. You've got Publix and I miss pub subs so bad. Oof. Oh, my. Have you ever had a Publix sub? I haven't, but I've had like almost any bodega sandwich that is better than any sandwich I've did had. Did you see here. that tiny? I, was like, <laughs> I did. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, fly. Um, bodega sandwich. Have you been to um oh crap I'm going to forget it cuz I can never remember name Bay Cities near the in Santa Monica? Oh, I love Bay Cities. Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh Not it's, a bodega. It's one of those places mm -hmm. where I've gone multiple times on a Monday and then been like, "Oh yeah, they're always closed on Monday." <laughs> Glad I drove 14 miles <laughs> in 8 hours to get here. That's very frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating. Uh um okay. So, do you have So the whole point of the podcast I made it cuz I I just my favorite thing about stand up is when something bad happens, we oh, get yeah. to at least make a joke out of it yes. or try. Yes. Do you have? Let's start off. Do you have a joke that, or you choose? Do you want to start off with something that you didn't or haven't made into a joke yet, or one that you did? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the one that I did. Okay. 
So, uh, I mean, there's so many things that have <laughs> gone wrong. Um, well, I would say, I would say, you know, sometimes like, you know, people <laughs> fall out of love. Yes. <laughs> right, folks? It happens. Uh, and I think over the pandemic, I did go through a breakup that was particularly harsh. Uh, just in the way of how it ended and what kind of transpired after. Uh, did I make some mistakes? You better believe it. Uh, did <laughs> this I? Is Harry Potter? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is Harry Potter. Okay. Uh, I just say her full name. No, <laughs> um, I would never. But, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, those, it was a very painful t- time. And then kind of what happened was that. Uh, so we were, we were like quarantined with her parents for the first four months of the pandemic because her and I both had like a thousand roommates and we, you know, we were like, what's happening? Let's go out there. And then after that, uh, of living with them, you know, we were like, this is, we're getting along pretty good. So let's get a place together. Mm -hmm. And then we got a place two months later, broke up. So I like had to go back to Portland. Because I, you know, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, oh, so this was all in L.A. This was all here. Yeah. And, you know, so went back to Portland because I was like, I'm not going to sign another lease. I'm mm-hmm. not going to get roommates. Why am I even here? <laughs> it's literal hell. <laughs> right. I yeah. mean, L.A. during the pandemic, I don't think there was a worse place to be no. in the country. I'm glad you that was a good move <coughs> to go. Yeah. And so. So I go up there. Then I kind of like find out, you know, that uh, they've started like seeing someone else pretty quick, you know? (gasps) No. Yeah. And like an old flame. Ooh, that's the worst. Horrifying. And then, and then I sat with that information in a uh, basement sublet (laughs) of this like haunted house. No. For four months. Yeah. So I I got this sublet right before I went back to Portland because. I wanted to be close to family, but I knew I was going to be like kind of, you know, I was going to be a little naughty, you know, coming out of a breakup. I was going to be taking some risks. And you, know? you don't want to go to a parent's house. It's gonna, mm. Yeah. So I was like, I got to I got to get my own place. So I got this place that was this like re uh, like remodeled, super nice, like basement uh, ADU. Like they used it for, I think, Airbnb. What's ADU. ADU, it's like a, it's like when you make an extension or something okay. of your house to rent. I think All right. I probably said nothing right, but I never do. Uh, so it was like a really, it was probably like sixteen hundred square feet, like okay. just a fully furnished, you know, nice apartment. And the people who lived in the house upstairs uh, had already bought another house, so they moved. Uh, like three days after they, they got there, they, the whole family moved like three hours away. That's great, right? And, yeah. And so the sublet was like me, you know, it was a super good deal. And it was kind of based on the fact that like I would, there would be someone there through the winter, like a winter caretaker <laughs> a la Shining, <laughs> except I have no family to murder. Oh. Uh, so like, so, you know, because uh, they were selling the house in the spring. They wanted to wait to sell the house in the spring. Okay. Um, so, you know, I I learn all that information <laughs> up after my breakup, you know, find it out through Venmo. I found it out <gasps> through Venmo. About the other guy? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, was I there an emoji involved? It was just something where I was just like, you know, I had seen I had seen things like on social media that I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Okay, I guess I just have to like unfollow you know, what or whatever. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, but I was like, maybe I should. <laughs> and then I saw something on Venmo, <clears throat> uh, you know, where I was like, oh. And then, yeah, literally lived in this haunted house because it was a giant house haunted as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was scared every night for the first, like, month that I was there until oh I was like. Oh, my God. I would die. Until, I would like, hate that. Yeah. Until I was kind of like, oh, I guess just, like, old houses just make these sounds. You I know? was going like, to say, why did you think it was haunted? It's just creaking. And, and you know, like, when you live in apartments, you mm-hmm. know, you hear shit all the time. And you're like, that's some fucking, I, my neighbor I hate. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like. A crazy person outside. It's kind of comforting at the same time. (laughs) Because you know, but when you know for a fact that there is nobody there, 
And if there is, something's horribly wrong. <laughs> and you hear any sort of sound past like nine o'clock. No. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so that was me. And when I when I got the sublet, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to like write the great American novel yeah. and like, you know, just really, you know, I'm not going to watch TV. I'm just going to read, read Jurassic Park. Yeah, I'm reading <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> so anyway, I found all that stuff out. And, you know, kind of at the one of the lowest points, you know, because uh, I blocked I, I eventually was like, as soon as I saw that, I literally went like full nuke, you know, like I deleted her number. I blocked her. That's good. That's healthy. Everything. Though, I think yeah, it was the healthiest thing I did other than <laughs> I did start following and then slightly stalking the her new boyfriend. <laughs> and while it was so painful. <laughs> It was very painful, like when I saw him, because I was like, "Oh, you son of a bitch!" Was it from your personal account, or did you have like a different account? I well, I'll say this, okay. When I say follow, I mean he didn't. Okay, he had a public account, got so it, I got just it, like got looked it. him up. I didn't. I should have assumed that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I guess I didn't follow. I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> Facebook friend request from Simon. <laughs> I think you would do that. No, I mean, I made it sound like I did do that. I made it sound like that. Uh, so I looked him up. Kind of his ballsy, though, if you did, like, I'm watching yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, you looked him up. <laughs> and so in the joke, in the joke, I, I say that I looked him up on Instagram, but in actuality, I looked him up on Twitter. And, uh, you know, and it's one of these, and here's where the joke comes in. Because, like, first of all, I looked him up on Twitter. He only had like 200 followers. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. fucking pathetic. Yeah, you know? loser. Yeah, I got like twice that many. <laughs> you know, that's the joke. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of times people don't get it. So I'll be like, that's 400. <laughs> and then they'll laugh. <laughs> How did he uh, not get that? Audiences are so stupid, you know, <laughs> where I'll be like, I got like twice that because it's not, it's still nothing, you know, like 400. <laughs> um, but then on his Twitter, he had a link uh, to his YouTube channel. And so I clicked that link. And of course, yes, he is a musician. Tale as old as time. Blah. Comedian will always lose to a musician. That's just the way of the world. Uh, but he likes to do covers of songs. And so he... Uh, and then I like get the crowd to sing. I'm like, do you guys know that song by Jimmy Eat World? Uh, the only song, you know, by Jimmy Eat World. <laughs> and then I get the whole crowd to sing, you know, it just takes some time. And everyone starts singing. I was like, uh, he was covering that song, not on a guitar, but on a what? A kazoo. <laughs> okay. What? And he sucked at it. He really? Was just like, burp, burp, burp. <laughs> and I saw that. I'm not even kidding. I was actually back. In, I was back in L.A. I was back in L.A. Uh, like, I, I got like booked for for something uh where I had to like stay at a friend's apartment and we did it together and they like mailed us this whole thing. So, you know, we both had to quarantine and ship it. So I was I was at her house on an air mattress in the living room, <laughs> just like spiraling, you know, just like at my because I hadn't been back to L.A. since the breakup. And well, I was you're just close like, to her in that fucker. Yeah. And so I'm just like holding my phone above my face. <laughs> And I see that, and I imme it like it immediately washes away, and I I just started laughing, and I was like, you know what, I kind of like this guy, <laughs> 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 you know. I was like, he's putting himself out there. Mm -hmm. It that YouTube video had like twenty views. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, this guy's a fucking dork, you know. That's a good feeling. He looks really cool. Like you know, you see him. I'm like, he's like, eh, you know. Like, and then you really dig into it. And then I dig. I was like, okay. So I made that into a joke. That's great. It's, it's going well, and I can't wait for them both to see it. They <laughs> actually probably have or have been told about it. That's awesome. Um, a kazoo. A kazoo. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, it was good stuff for me. It was, and I basically, I'm like, I highly, if anyone's going through a heartbreak, heartbreak right now, you know, I highly recommend just seeing something really embarrassing about the other person <laughs> that they're with, you know, <laughs> you know how easy that is. Yeah. But, but that's like a one of a lifetime, like once in a lifetime, like gold nugget. I was going to say that was a golden gift. Oh, wow. God, I love you, Ray. Um, Whew. his name's Ray. Uh, 
So that was the one that works. Right. That's good. I actually, side note, I know a lot of girls, and me personally, are so turned off and cringed by the guy who brings out the guitar. Yeah. There's a lot more of the other type that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yes. Or I don't know a lot more, but I feel like I feel like, you know, more you than bust 50, out the I guitar because yeah. it works, right? I just think it's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I used to watch The Bachelor, don't anymore. I'm off I'm off the wagon. Off the sauce. A few seasons off. Yeah. And the it's guy hard. it was. It's it was to, it was really hard. Go cold to turkey. Yeah. Uh, but the guy who brought out the guitar was always like, Oh, come on. Like yeah. you you know, you know, no. 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 And they encourage that too. Like they're like, hey, you want to serenade <laughs> whatever? <laughs> they push him out. <laughs> well, I'm glad that Ray has a kazoo. Yeah. No, he's a good guy. 200, uh, <laughs> 200 followers. Maybe more now. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. And that's then, a really good one. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do it tonight at the show <laughs> I'm on. Uh, they better understand that 400 followers yeah, is not a lot either. Yeah. I think I have 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't use who's, Twitter. Yeah, who's on Twitter anymore? Um, and then I'm trying to think of the uh, something that, that I, happened that like, I mean, I will say I've tried to say this. So That works. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh no oh it, it has to be terrible okay no it doesn't it doesn't no we'll do whatever you want okay so when i was uh when i was 17 i so ended up good start. i ended up having a uh i ended up getting a bench warrant for my arrest or no i had just turned 18 so i had ended up getting a bench warrant for my arrest because me and my friend got pulled over uh on our way to the to the oregon coast uh, cause I lived like an hour and a half away from there growing up and we got pulled over with like a case of beer in the back seat. Ooh. Yeah. So I had to go to like a drug and alcohol class that was like, <laughs> instead of like, you know, whatever they're like, didn't put it on my record or anything. And, um, and so I, I never went to that class and just like totally forgot about it <laughs> and went on with my life. Uh, and then I got me and my friends just got stopped for some random, like, literally for nothing uh and they took all of our names down and then it came out out that i had a warrant for my arrest oh and bad boy bad but yeah (laughs) reformed (laughs) (laughs) ladies uh but so they you know took me to jail and uh you know they were like they're just gonna give you a court date and they're gonna let you go you know um still terrifying yeah side note i was also dabbling with selling weed at the time Everyone at 18. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they kind of just like forgot about it because I like said something when I in the back of the cop car where I was like, I'm not arguing that I had a warrant, but you guys had no right to illegally stop and search us. <laughs> and then the cop was like silent for a second. And then he was like, you know what? Since you're already in enough trouble, I'm just going to forget about this weed. That's and, great. And he dumped it like we were parked in front of someone like in someone's driveway and he just dumped it out on the ground and like just kind of lazily like stomped it with his foot and then just got I was like, you just left weed and it was like literally someone's <laughs> home driveway. Some dog got super high. Yeah, super high. <laughs> uh, and so then we're like going to the thing and he's like, you know, they're just going to give you another whatever. So I'm in the I'm in the hold the waiting area for like six hours. And uh, they keep calling people's names and then they get a go. And I'm like, weird. Why haven't they called my name? And then finally I go up there and uh, and I'm like, hey, um, what's going on? And she's like, oh, well, because your warrant is from another county, because where we got pulled over was like in another, not in Portland County or whatever. So they were like, oh, yeah, you either have to wait to see the judge uh, or you have to pay your bail, which was like five hundred dollars. Ooh! And you know now <laughs> that's nothing. To <laughs> yeah, me. garbage. Yeah, I wipe <laughs> my toothpaste stains with five hundred dollars. Uh, and so, so then the, you know she and I was like, well, that's a million dollars to me, an eighteen year old. And like, I was too scared to like call my parents, you know. And I thought somehow things would work out. So then <laughs> basically what happens is they close that area. So everyone who's still there 
has to like go to the actual jail with all of the inmates. Oh no. So I get uh so like they take eight of us into this like room or like like a just a big room and we all have to like strip down fully naked, strip searched and uh this like huge he looks like job of the hut this like <laughs> 400 pound piece of shit uh and and he's like you know yelling at everyone to bend over and spread their cheeks oh my god and then uh so he so he gets to me and then i like spread <laughs> my cheeks and he goes that's not wide enough <gasps> and then i turn around and i swear to god i say I've never done this before. <laughs> I don't know how it works. And then he leans in, and I swear to God, he says, uh, well, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> no <laughs> way! And, uh, and then, yeah, and then that was it for that. <laughs> and then we go to, like, the cell block or whatever, and he literally says this. Everyone's like out of their cell. They're all just kind of like hanging out. There's two roads. And um, <clears throat> he's like, he like does. I mean, again, this guy's like 400 pounds and like f- not very tall. Uh, and he and he like announces to the whole cell block while doing this sort of like la di da kind of like prance where he goes like, hey, everybody, look out. We got a rookie on board <laughs> and points right at me. And 20, 30 prisoners just like lock eyes with me. Oh, no. And uh, Fresh I can't, bait. And I can't tell you the rest of the story because <laughs> I will have a mental breakdown. Really? But needless to say, it was pretty funny. No, it's actually nothing bad happened to me at all. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> um, but no, I eventually got bailed out. But really, like the part that I just want to make into a joke is where he is where he's like, <laughs> well, there's a first time for everything. Yeah, because that's that is golden. That is that's like, gold stuff. Yeah, that's good is... stuff. But I've never. I think I said it like once or twice, and and I was like, ah, this is gonna take so much. In a in a story setting, it's good, but I'm just like, eh, how do you make this into something not horrific? How would I do that at the at the Le Brea Improv? You know, <laughs> on a Wednesday. I think uh, on a Wednesday they'd like to spread the cheeks. Thursday, I don't know. They're, no weekends, they're not I spreading don't no know. cheeks. But yeah. But what do you mean? That's the perfect miserable like kind of moment. That is like perfect. Yeah, yeah. That is quite the memory. Went through a lot, and yeah, I was like, I mean, <laughs> real age here, thirty eight. So that was literally twenty years ago. <laughs> like, I was nuts. I'd be terrified. I've lived an interesting life. <laughs> Haunted houses in guys looking at your butthole. <laughs> <Yeah>. Or guy. <laughs> yeah. Guy. Haunted house and a guy <laughs> looking directly up my 18-year-old asshole. That's a memoir. Yeah. <laughs> that is the name of my my memoir. 18-year-old asshole. <laughs> I'd read it. <laughs> it's like my face peeking through my own. <laughs> yeah. Thought. Or just your eye. Yeah. In <laughs> <laughs> quotes, I've never done this before. Horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Truly horrific. Yeah. That would definitely be one I think you should figure out how, because that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll do it tonight, too. <laughs> you text me. It didn't work, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. It never works for real. <laughs> no, it's good. Well, those are great. Thank you so much for doing the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. I, <laughs> I love to share <laughs> horrific things that yeah. have happened. I'm like, <laughs> when I think about it, I'm like, did I just make like, it's called Misery Loves Mandy, but I'm like, I think it's like talking about really shitty things in a fun way. In a fun way. Yeah. Yeah. It's our coping mech. Yes, it is. What would we do without it? I don't know what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we got. 